Hi everybody, it's Alison Davies here, Neurologic Music Therapist and Brain Care Specialist. I'm here to answer a question from one of our viewers, which is about sensory processing disorder. And um, this person just asked, asked about a couple of strategies for managing it. And this stemmed from seeing a pattern across their son's life, 14 year old son, now they can look back across his life and see that he's never liked to be touched, even as a baby, never wanted to be held. He's okay with the taste of food, but can't cope with the texture and multiple things like that, which has led this parent to believe that their child might have sensory processing disorder. So firstly, sensory processing disorder doesn't actually have a clinical diagnosis yet, but that's not to say that it is not well accepted. It is, we know it exists. And in fact, the numbers will say that one in 20 children in Australia and America are living with sensory processing disorder. I would like to add to that, that it's not just children. Those children become adults. I'm an adult with sensory processing disorder and SPD is by no means a childhood thing. So this is why it's so wonderful you've asked this question because if you suspect that your son has SPD, you need to start managing it now because he will be managing it for the rest of his life. This is not necessarily a bad thing. There's no cause for concern. Sensory processing disorder can be very difficult to experience, but very, uh, I don't wanna say easy, but very possible to manage. Um, now I would always go to a, a, an occupational therapist straight up if you suspect that someone in your family has sensory processing disorder because we all have our own individual sensory profiles. That means my sensory profile is going to be different to yours, to yours, to yours, to yours. And to understand how to manage our own specific needs, we really need that clarity. So an occupational therapist is absolutely step one. After that, I would look at general sensory minimization because one of the issues with sensory processing disorder is sensory overload. And we don't have to have SPD to experience sensory overload. We all tend to experience sensory overload. So look in at around your environment, look at your son's environment, bedroom, classroom, um, lounge room, look at all the spaces that are in your house or that he frequents and spends time in and think about the sensory information in there. Is there any way you can um, control or if, if, if you have space or control over any of those spaces, you might not have control over his bedroom, him being a 14 year old, but is there any way that you can adapt or minimize the sensory information in there? What I do in our house is I look at each room and go, what can I see? What's in my visual field? and how can I reduce that a bit? And so that comes just as a bit of a declutter. And then I think, what can I hear? What noises in here might be causing sensory overload and how can I reduce the noise in this environment? And often that's taking batteries out of my kids' toys and things like that. Not if they don't want it, but the toys that they haven't you know, played with for ages, but they just sit around on the floor getting knocked over and making buzzing noises. Um, so think about the spaces that you do have a sense of control over and how you can minimize the sensory impact from being in those places. Because I'm going to imagine that he won't be able to avoid school. He won't be able to avoid um, busy social places because we still have lives. He might still have to go to the supermarket and he might still have to go to, um, I don't know, Kmart. Um, and these places are sensory dense. So rather than trying to um, avoid those scenarios, I prefer to encourage you to manage your daily sensory environment so that your brain is already coping at its best so that when it gets to the sensory dense places, it has a better chance of coping in those places. Then there is also a very complex issue um, around, or a more complex issue around sensory input. Sometimes sensory input, giving ourselves more sensory information can actually keep our brain calm and working at its best. Now this is definitely something also to talk about with your occupational therapist because um, this is quite a, a complex issue um, or concept. But you can absolutely start by trying something like a weighted blanket. Um, anything that offers deep pressure usually helps our brain to stay organized, which keeps us calm. Um, anything that offers 
proprioceptive input, which is running around outside, exercising, hanging off the monkey bars, climbing a tree, anything like that helps our brain stay organized, which helps us stay calm. So discuss that with your occupational therapist. Make sure you go and see an OT and get that sensory profile assessment done. Start looking at your environment and working out how you can minimize the load so that your brain has, or your child's brain has less work to do. And then it can focus on the work it does need to do um, more effectively. Um, and, and don't let this scare you or worry you. Um, the experience and the feeling of sensory overload can be horrid and it leads to anxiety, um, survival mode, fight, flight or freeze and it can lead to meltdowns and it can seem absolutely dramatic and absolutely horrible when you're experiencing it. But it is very, very possible to manage your sensory environment in a way that uh, manages your needs. And when you manage it, the anxiety is less, the survival mode is less, the meltdowns stop happening and just something seriously as simple as rearranging your sensory or your environment can absolutely change everything. So please don't get overwhelmed. Go and see your OT and I have more videos on sensory processing disorder and sensory overload within Parent TV, so go check them out.